Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at moments, so we can answer questions from exercise 4a. So, so far in mechanics in the first year we have been looking at applying forces to a particle and seeing how much acceleration that particle is going to have through the formula of F equals ma. A diagram like this uh, might be used. Uh, but for moments, what we're going to be effectively using is a balancing beam and we're going to be applying forces onto this balancing beam and seeing what happens to the balancing beam. Uh, but what we're also going to have on this balancing beam is either one or two, in this case just one, pin effectively stuck into the balancing beam that the beam is going to rotate around. So this is going to be a fixed point, we call this the pivot point, and the beam is going to rotate around that pivot point depending upon the forces that we apply onto this balancing beam. Now to start with, if I apply a 6 Newton force right at the pivot point, nothing's going to happen because effectively you can treat this as the fixed point. Um, if I try and budge the fixed point, it's not going to move anything. So that's fixed. We're not going to have any rotation if I apply the force here. But if I just shuffle it along a little bit towards the left hand side, if I now apply a 6 Newton force going upwards, then the left hand side is going to start to raise up, the right hand side is going to start to lower down, and it's going to start to rotate around this um, pivot point here. And we can clearly see here this is going in a clockwise direction. Um, so yeah, great. Uh, now how could, we ex how could we increase the spinniness of this uh, balancing beam here? Well we could Number one, we could include this, um, we could increase this force uh, maybe to 16 newtons, that will increase the spinniness of this uh, pivot point of this uh, beam. Or we could move the 6 newton force further out, and that will increase the spinniness of this beam around the fixed point as well. Okay, so the, the key terminology for these bits, the beam, the balancing beam that I'm referring to, will be referred to as a straight rod, a one-dimensional straight object, sometimes called a lamina, mostly a rod though. And the pivot point, yeah, well that's, that's the pivot point, that's the fixed point, that's the pin that you effectively stick into your balancing beam to keep it where it is. So, when we work out the spinniness of an object, we're effectively working out the moment of that um, of that spin around a pivot point. If it's in equilibrium, then there's going to be no spinning. The forces maybe on each side will balance each other out. And the way that we calculate the value of a moment involves two components. You've seen here that the distance is affecting the moment, and also the value of the force will affect the moment as well. So uh, the turning motion caused by a force is dependent on or well, the spinniness is affected by the magnitude of the force, the bigger the force, the more turn uh, at faster rate, and the distance away from the pivot point, the bigger the distance causes more turn. Okay, for example, the further you push a door from its hinge, the less effort is required to close it. You can, you can go and try that. Uh, to calculate the moment about a point, we use this formula here, and it's just a simple multiplication between those two elements we've just been looking at. A moment about a point is equal to force times perpendicular distance. Okay, so you just multiply those two together. So, for example, in this question here, if I have a... What I mean by perpendicular distance is that the force is meeting the beam at a right angle, and that's really important. We'll show you how we can fix that in a second. But to calculate the moment of this spin here, it's going to be 5 times 3, that's 15. So the moment at this point here is 15 newton meters. And we can see here that that's going to rotate clockwise. You effectively think of the pivot point as the center of your clock. And if you were to move upwards on the left hand side of the clock, you'd be going in the clockwise direction. So we would also write after that in the clockwise direction. Okay, so you must always include the direction at the moment, it's either anti-clockwise or clockwise, and the distance must always be perpendicular from the pivot, uh, yeah, okay, 
So in this question here, what we effectively have is maybe we could represent the dotted line as a piece of string attached to a pin that's put into a pin board. And we've now got a four Newton force that's pushing the string in this direction. Calculate the moment of this force. Well, here the distance is equal to two. The force is equal to four. It meets the force and the string are meeting at a right angle. So that's fine. So it's going to be eight Newton meters. So these types of questions are relatively straightforward. It's these types of questions here that are a little bit more tricky. Now what we effectively have to do here, because this four meters here does not meet the force at a right angle, we have to work out the shortest distance from this uh, point here to this line here. So we're going to have to work out this distance here, the blue distance that we've worked out here. And the way we can do that is just by a bit of simple right angle trigonometry. It must meet at a right angle, therefore we can just use Sokar or Toa. Um, 4 on the hypotenuse, 30 on the angle. So the side on the blue line here is just going to be 4 sine 30. And now we can times this by the 9 Newton force. So the distance is 4 sine 30 times by 9. And we get 18 Newton meters. Lovely, okay, so uh, your turn to have a go at these questions here then. I've included the most difficult of the questions. Uh, maybe C looks a little bit easier because we've already got the right angle triangle drawn in for us. Um, maybe do C and then have a go back at A and B. So pause the video and try these questions out. Right, okay then, so I'm going to try C first, it's already got the triangle in there for me. Um, so, I need, I know that my force is going to be 9.5 newtons, great. Um, I've got a 2.8 metre line here and I've got a 60 degree angle here. So this side of this triangle here is 2.8 cos 60. Why cos this time and not sine? Well, because this is the adjacent side to this 60 degree angle rather than the opposite side, uh, which would be this line here. So the calculation for the moment in this case is going to be equal to 9.5 times 2.8 cos 60. I know that cos 60 is a half, so I'm just going to do 9.5 times 1.4. And that gives me 1 point, sorry, 13.3 new units are Newton meters. And I also need to know which um, direction I'm going to be traveling clockwise or anti-clockwise. Treating this as the center of my clock, and if a direction was going in that direction, it would be going clockwise around my clock. So it's going to be clockwise. Okay, now going back to, in fact, I'm going to work backwards to B first because I'm, A doesn't look that great. Um, I'll draw my perpendicular line in, meeting at a right angle here. Uh, I've got a 7.2 here, 45 degrees over here. So this side here is going to be 7.2, uh, not cos in this case, it's going to be sine because the angle is opposite the side. So it's going to be sine 45. And then it's, that's the distance. So the moment in this case here is going to be equal to 6 newtons, because that's the force, times the perpendicular distance, 7.2 times sine 45. So in this case, let's type that all out. 6.5 times 7.2, no, just 6 times 7.2 times sine 45. And we get here 30.5 Newton meters. And is this going to be going clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, this is the center of my clock. It's going to be going downwards on the left-hand side. So that's going to make it in the anti-clockwise direction. All right then, and for the final one, now I'd rather this line just be extended a slight little bit so that when I draw my perpendicular in, it is just fitting in right. Um, now I need to work out this side here. Now it's going to be five on the hypotenuse and it's going to be sine 30 because it's opposite, because we're working out the length of the opposite side here. So five sine 30. So in this case here, the moment 
is going to equal uh, 4 for the force times 5 sine 30. Sine 30 is equal to 1 half. Half of 4 is 2, so this is going to be 10 newton meters. And will it be clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, on the left-hand side here, it's going to be going upwards, and that would be in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so there we are. Those are the answers to these questions then. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 4a on page 72. Have a go at the exam type questions and the problem solving type questions, but do move on uh, pretty quickly because this is only really touching on the basics of moments. So thanks very much for watching.